Windows 11 was released back in October, but if you've yet to make the leap and like me have been hanging back to see what it's all about, how easy it is to upgrade and whether it's worth it, then this video is for you. First up, let's recap on what's different and why you might want to upgrade. Well, in a nutshell, it's got a fresh new look with the default taskbar bottom and center, and it includes lots of features to help increase productivity and make the user experience just generally better. It's got things like snap layouts, which is a way to format your various windows side by side on your screen, the ability to now run your Android apps that you've got on your phone on your Windows computer and improved widgets to name just a few. So now let's get into the juicy bit. Who can actually upgrade to Windows 11 and how easy is it to do? Well, that depends. In order to upgrade for free, you must be running Windows 10 already and have the latest version. And you can check which version you've got really easily if you're not sure by searching WinVert in the search bar and it will tell you. Or of course, you can search under updates to make sure that there's no updates that you need to do. Now, if you're running an earlier version of Windows or if you're buying maybe a new PC which doesn't have it pre-installed, then you will need to buy a genuine Windows 11 license, which you can purchase really easily from the Windows website or, of course, we sell at Scan and we've popped the links for those below. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to assume that you're upgrading from the latest version of Windows 10 and so it's a free upgrade. So once you're happy that you've got the latest update, you'll also need to check your hardware to see if you've got what's required. Microsoft have made this really easy with their Windows Health Check that you can use. You just pop onto their website and click here and it'll tell you if you're good to go. But for ease, these are the minimum system requirements that you'll need on screen now, which include a one gigahertz or faster processor with at least two cores on a compatible 64-bit processor or SOC, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, a graphics card that's compatible with DirectX 12 or later with a WDDM 2.0 driver, at least a 720p display and TPM 2.0. Plus, of course, you'll need an internet connection and a Microsoft account. Now, if you're wondering what TPM 2.0 is, you wouldn't be alone. It stands for Trusted Platform Module and it's a chip that's either integrated into your PC's motherboard or added separately into the CPU. Its purpose is to protect encryption keys, user credentials and other sensitive data behind a hardware barrier so that malware and attackers can't access or tamper with your data. So it's a good thing to have for sure. But if your laptop or PC doesn't have it enabled, you might come unstuck. If you bought it in the last year, you very likely not to have to worry about this part. It'll pass the health check and you'll be away. If it's been purchased in the last four or five years, then you're likely to have TPM 2.0, but you might need to enable it in the BIOS. The process for this does vary from system to system, as manufacturers don't always label the option for TPM. So if you're not sure which option to pick, leading motherboard manufacturers such as Asus have their own guides. And we've provided a link to some of these below, which will hopefully help you. So I've got everything in order to update and hopefully you do now too. So simply press install and sit back and wait. Now, of course, it's going to vary from system to system on how long the install takes, but make sure if you're using a laptop like me, you leave it plugged in. Mine took approximately 20 minutes. So now it's all installed and I've had a chance to have a little play around with it, I'm going to walk you through just some of the features that I found really useful. So the first thing that I'm going to do is plug in to a monitor and there's a couple of reasons for this. One is so that you can see more easily what I'm doing and the second one is so you can see one of the really handy features that I found really useful and this is the fact that it remembers my second screen layout. Uh, this is really useful for me because it just saves me the time setting everything up and it means that when I plug into a monitor like lots of people are doing at the moment, traveling from home, maybe going into an office place or working on the move, it just means everything's exactly where I want it to be and I can start work right away. So a big thumbs up on that one for me. The first thing that most people will notice is that the taskbar's moved to the bottom here and in the center. Now, I actually quite like it. It doesn't feel too alien and it's really easy to use, but if you don't like it, you can really simply move it all you need to do is click to the right here of the taskbar and it will bring up taskbar settings. All you need to do then is scroll down to taskbar behaviors and in there, taskbar alignment, and you simply click on there and pop it to the left. And there you go, it goes over to the left, 
which is probably how you prefer to use it if you're a fan of how it was before. If you like the new change, like I do, pop it back into the centre and then close that one up. Now you had a little sneak preview there, but I'll actually open up the settings tab for you because this has got a whole new clean look as well. It's much bigger, it's much cleaner, it's really easy to navigate. Let's so have a flick through that because I think you'll hopefully find that one really useful as well. One thing to mention actually when you do open that up is I spent a little while, it's a bit embarrassing to say, trying to find the power off switch which is just located there in the bottom right hand corner. So let's take a look now at snap layouts which is another feature that I find really handy. I've already shown you the second screen that I like to use at work. If we hover over the maximize button here it will bring you all these custom layouts that you can work with. Now I'm going to add in a fourth window so let's go for this one. If I click on there, then it gives me the option to add in each of these, any of the programs that I've got open here in the taskbar. You just simply click, so we'll open the scan YouTube channel there and the internet there. And the fourth window that it's brought through is the settings that I had open as well. Obviously, you could have things like your emails on there, your calendar, whatever you like to work with. So I found that really, really handy. And anytime you want to switch back, you simply click on here and then just select the windows that you'd like to switch between. So a really nice touch there, just makes things a little bit more seamless. Another feature that I really liked is the ability to pair my phone. I've got an Android device and I can link it up with my Windows desktop. All I needed to do was click on here at the bottom, there's a little icon which is your phone and then you get a QR code to scan and then all it does is bring through all of the apps that you've got on your phone. So you don't need to worry about logging in or any passwords because I'm forever forgetting mine. You don't need to download anything onto your desktop but you can access any of those apps and that's really handy for a number of reasons. The one that I particularly like is my calendar. I'm constantly adding things on the go on my phone. I don't have all the calendars all set up here but I can pull it through really easily without having to go and get those passwords and I can see all of my appointments and various other things. But there's a million ways that that could work for you and that could be handy. Just that ability to access your app. So a big thumbs up to Windows 11 for that one. You might find that useful. And then finally, there are plenty others that I could talk you through, but the ones that I found most useful from me having a little play around with it is the improved widget. So if we hover over here and click on widgets, it brings up this panel here and you can completely customize this. It comes with things already like the weather and the calendar, or you can add in a to-do list. There's a number of different widgets you can add in as well. And then you can have a search. So if you wanted maybe a calculator, if that's handy for you, or you could put some games on there, or of course you can have the news coming through and that's just all sitting there in your sidebar and then you can just minimize it, carry on with your work and then pop it up as and when you want to have a look at various things. So another nice, handy, clean way of displaying your widgets. So there you have it, upgrading is mostly easy. You'll gain loads of cool new features and the experience is a whole lot nicer to use and more intuitive. Some of you might have to have a bit of messing around to get TPM 2.0 enabled, but hopefully the steps we've just run through above will help you there. So let us know, are you already running Windows 11? If so, how have you found it? Or are you holding back like I did? Tell us the reasons why you have and if we've managed to make you feel more comfortable about updating. And of course, if your PC is looking a bit long in the tooth and needs a complete refresh, then we also offer a full range of 3XS PCs and laptops for all uses like gaming, video and audio production, graphical and 3D design and anything else you could possibly think of. You can select from one of our pre-spec PCs from the website or even configure your own specification in our 3XS configurator. And there's also our 3XS custom shot where you can work with us to add some really personal touches and make it your own.